Technology, Sports, Music, Fashion. Welcome to Pacific Beach Street. So I'm Corinne and we have a delicious show for you today. Like I eat some tree with Maori chef Charles Royale. Hey, I'm Kelly and I get to experience Irish dancing. Well, that would be why you're making potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> today I check out the cool technology they use to sort out me and your mail. I'm Sammy Salsa and today I get to feed all of Nisha Mystic. We better get cracking with this food, guys. And girlfriend, what the hell is that? Beetroot Garbaggio. What did you call me? Gabaccio. <laughs> I swear I did not do that. Oh yeah, next thing you're gonna say was a bloody leprechaun that did it. <laughs> oh, good thing you opted to do your fabric painting, Suri. Here you go. Bye. Fashion. People have been painting fabric for centuries, from the amazing tapa creations of our ancestors to the batik paintings in Asia. So let's meet one Kiwi lass who's taken this ancient tradition and turned it into New Zealand high fashion. Hey, everybody meet Gillian, artist and fabric painter. Now Gillian, can you tell us exactly what it is that you do? Well, I work for Liz Mitchell. I'm still doing finishing and um, buttonholes and putting buttons on. And occasionally, I get to do some fabric painting. Now, before I stole your scarf, <laughs> I'd never heard of fabric painting. How did you get into it? I started with batik. What is batik? And that is um, when you put a hot wax on the fabric. It's used throughout the world in Africa, Japan, um, but it's big in Indonesia. And in the worldwide fashion scene now, is fabric painting kind of hip? Yes, <laughs> very much so at the What's moment. What's made that come about? Um, there's been a whole series of beautiful painted dresses put out by Dolce and Cabana, and they're really huge and totally dramatic. Look at this one. This one is so amazing. It reminds me of a piece of artwork. Do you consider this art or fashion? I don't consider it high art myself, but it's definitely influenced by art. Jill, what's involved in creating a fabric painting? Well, I think the best thing would be to come into the basement <laughs> I have over there and show you some of the techniques in our messy area. Let's do it. All right, Jill, so what are we going to do here? I'm going to show you my stencils. You use an action, up and down action like that. This is going to be an alarming strawberry pink colour. And you just use a small amount of paint, so you could try that if you like. That's it. Great, <gasps> that's beautiful. See how it's getting quite painterly, and then maybe dip in again. A little bit more. I'm getting excited. Yes, a bit more white, and then go in from that side. And again, that's it. Well, we could have a little peep. Here yeah, and just see how that's gone. You see, that's beautiful. Ooh. Look at that. That's really lovely. That's great. Go me. Okay. Go me. <laughs> so, Jill, I've bought some fabric and I was wondering if I could turn it into something a little bit like this that I could take away with me. Certainly. Let's give it a go. All right. I think that's done. Beautiful. Do you love it as much as I do? Yes, I do. I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jill, thank you so much for showing us how you turned this ancient art form into something funky and fashionable. I love it. Now, what can I turn it into? Where's that recipe from my mum? That best chop suey recipe? Oh! What was that? Are you seriously still waiting for your letter? Be proactive, go find it already! Why didn't I think of it? Technology. If this is how much mail comes out of one little box, imagine how much mail New Zealand Post sort every day. Today, we're off to East Tamaki to check out the latest technology in mail sorting and hopefully find that recipe from my mum. Let's go. Everybody, meet Joseph, team leader here at New Zealand Post and East Tamaki Mail Centre. 
So, Joseph, what mail actually gets processed here? The mail for the Auckland region and Northland gets processed here, Mike. Now, how long has New Zealand Post been handling Kiwi's mail? They've been handled for over 168 years. So the technology of sorting mail must have changed a lot since then, eh? Oh, definitely. Uh, we've come a long way since then. We've got the latest uh, automation, you know, based on our mail centres. Can you take me through for a look? We will. Sweet. Let's go, bro. Let's okay, go. Then, man. So this is it. Whoa, this place is huge, man. Yeah, man. So how much mail would you process through here every day? Every day we're processing up over 1.5 million mail items. The people behind us that are sorting the mail, what are they looking for? They're looking for mail that's obviously it can't fit into a machine. Right. That is going to get handled manually. Do you think that they could handle this? Yes, definitely. We're going to give that mail a go through this our bad system. Boy. But tell me what's going to happen to it once it goes through the barrel. It's got slates on that culling drum that can that will let mail fit through those slates. The mail that can't fit through their slates, that is not going to go through a machine. The next part it's going to do is face up that mail, face it up the right way. Okay, it's going to identify if it's got a stamp. We're going to use the software in our machinery. It's going to read that address. So the machine itself just reads the address? Correct. So once uh, it's read our address, our machinery here is going, to, is going to put a barcode on the bottom of our envelope, and then it's going to send it to a stacker. Is that where our letter's going to come out? Yes. All right, let's go find that pink envelope. Yes, and there it is. It's got its little stamp, little barcodes down here. Now, once they all come out here, where are they going to go to? This is going to go to another machine we call the barcode sorting machine. Well, shall we head over there? We will. Now, there's three of these machines. Why are we at BCS1? Your postcode on your letter here, Mike, it is in the 1000s. So we're on BCS1 here. How are we going to get my letter sorted? <laughs> right, we're going to put that mail into a tray. We're going to feed it through our machine here. And then we're going to let the machine uh, do its business and process your mail. So you just chuck it on. Yes, you're right. Put it on there, mate. Woohoo! Yeah! I should get a job here, man. So what are all the stackers for, Joseph? All right, these stackers are broken down into the posty runs, ready for our posties to deliver the mail. And I see right over here is our pink letter. So if this is the mail for Pacific Beach Street, where's the rest of it? All this mail will be into this tray here. Ooh. Oh, and here it is, the recipes I've been waiting for from my mum. Look, Joseph, thank you so much for showing us how the mail center works. If you guys are interested in maybe getting a job here, check out the website below. I gotta get these back to the file. Kalia, why do Irish dancers look like they're dancing on hot potatoes? And what's up with their clothes? And why do you call them Irish dancers? Sam, I've told you a million times, I don't know! Well, shut up and make these potatoes for Nisha Mystic. I got the recipe! Let's go! <laughs> 